盾の勇者様がお酒に酔った勢いで突然部屋に入ってきて私を押し倒してはあまだ夜は明けて姉さんとか言って私の服を無理やり引きちぎったんですえ私なんとか逃げ出して偶然同じ宿に泊まっていた元康様に助けを求めたんです You two are the silliest twats I ever met in my whole fucking life. I didn't say any of that shit, you dumb broads. But I did say your breath could stop a Mack truck, Betty Ann. I'll tell that to anyone who will listen. Fuck you, Shorzy! Fuck you, Betty Ann. Your breath is an existential crisis. Made me question my whole fucking life. Fuck you, Shorzy! Fuck you, Mary Ann. You got legs on you like redwoods. You could box jump a bungalow. Fuck you, Shorzy! Fuck you, Riley. Your mom groped me two Halloweens ago. Shut the fuck up or I'll take it to Twitter. Fuck you, Shorzy! I'd still smash you both if I was bored, but Riley and Jonesy's moms get too jealous. Make yourselves useful. Grab me a bag of dill picklers. Good luck, you fucking losers. All right, so this year's off to a great fucking start. So my PC, no exaggeration, committed suicide. Start off as just the hard drive having problems, which, in all fairness, the thing was 12 fucking years old. I'm honestly shocked it didn't die before, but that went bad. Then it just turned into one problem after the other, till finally I boot up BIOS to find the CPU temperature was 100 degrees Celsius, which was very bad. Whoa, right, that's the caps going then. <laughs> Uh, I should have known that uh, it wasn't going to work. Nah, just install Linux, bro. So at the moment, a replacement PC is coming in. This video is actually being edited on a laptop I had to go out and buy, which, in all fairness, is not exactly a slouch itself, but I want to keep the laptop as an emergency case scenario in case this new desktop ever starts having problems as well. Redundancies for your redundancies. You'd be amazed at how far that can get you. I almost broke down and had a third-party editor work on this, but I just can't do it. I have to be the one in control, otherwise I feel like it just wouldn't come out right. So, that's the deal at the moment. I'm gonna keep getting ready to work on Berserk Part 4, where I almost have all the materials I need done for that. I just need to finish up on the script and start recording audio, so by the time the new desktop comes in, I'm just gonna jump straight headfirst into that. This video is more of a test to see how well the laptop can handle making videos in case the new desktop ever dies, so I don't want anything to get in the way of production.
But I delayed long enough, let's just get right to the video, which is actually a subscribe star request by one of the friends. And he actually recommended a show that's pretty good. The Rising of the Shield Hero is the anime adaptation to the dark fantasy light novel series written by Aniko Yusagi. The story starts off as a typical Isekai adventure, and for those that don't know what Isekai means, think John Carter of Mars or Last Starfighter. Normal dude gets dragged into New World and has adventures. It's a big genre in Japan at the moment, with God knows how many Isekai animes getting pumped out each season, and a lot of them tend to be pretty generic and formulaic wish fulfillment stuff. Main guy arrives in a fantasy world, gets god powers, gets a harem of big titty elf girls, etc, etc. The genre is so formulaic that it's actually a trope or a cliché that characters directly point out these things and address them. Kanasuba famously was a parody that mocks Isekai conventions. Shield Hero is similar, but it does things a bit differently. <laughs> Fuck you! I specifically made a point of saying that Shield Hero starts off as a basic Isekai adventure, specifically about half the first episode. The plot revolves around our protagonist, Naofumi, a typical dude from modern day Japan that is transported to a fantasy world after accidentally stumbling onto a magical book. There he finds three other men from different versions of Japan that were also transported the same way he was. Turns out this wasn't an accident. They were all specifically chosen and brought to this world to act as the heroes, grand warriors that are the only ones capable of defeating the reality-ending threat consuming the land. You have the sword hero, the spear hero, the archer hero, and Naofumi is chosen to be the shield hero. Their titles relating to the magical weapons they're granted and bonded to them. At first, Naofumi is excited at the chance of starting his life over. He was a loser back in the real world, and he sees this as a chance to have an adventure, to be a hero. He even gets a total hottie as a party member that will help him out with the fighting, since the shield hero doesn't have as much offensive capability as the other. It seems like this dude is ready to kick ass. Then his party member accuses him of rape. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Rape jokes are funny. I'm not joking, turns out that party member is actually the princess of the kingdom, and she accuses Nalfami of raping her, pretty much out of the blue, and as we see, was basically for fun, resulting in him losing all the prestige and respect he had from the villagers, and even the other heroes themselves view him as a scumbag. So Naofumi is outcast from this new society he was forced into. He's spit on and disrespected everywhere he goes, and they still demand he fight off the waves, the swarms of demons that attack the world periodically. Naofumi's only friends are a blacksmith that just barely believes his innocence, a slave trader, and a slave raccoon girl he was all but forced to purchase, since no one else will be his party member and give him a chance to fight off the monsters. Naofumi becomes a bitter, antisocial loner that despises the kingdom he was tasked to save. But to make matters even worse, a dark conspiracy in the background might be the cause of his suffering, and it's not done fucking with him just yet. Welcome to Rising of a Shield Hero. Right from the get-go, Shield Hero tries to separate itself from a lot of different Isekai stories by just actually having a plot. Now I say that, but it's actually slowly becoming a subgenre itself, the whole protag is betrayed by his party and has to change his life thing. The most famous one is probably Redo Healer. For reasons. But unlike Redo Healer, Shield Hero doesn't make Naofumi out to be a complete villain, not really by any means. Yeah, he's an asshole, and if you read the actual light novels, the dude legit becomes a sexist. Not even exaggerating, he full-blown hates women after what happened. Which... can you really blame the dude? I mean, I hate women. Still, he's not a bad guy. He's still very much a hero. Just one beaten down and persecuted by the people he's trying to save. Not gonna lie, it's a trope I tend to enjoy. The whole bad guys are beloved while the good guys treat as a villain thing. For some reason, I just, I latch onto that trope and I get invested when a story does it right. It's a guilty pleasure, I fully admit. And yeah, I think that Shield Hero actually manages to stick the landing, at least in the first half. Later on, it starts going into basic power fantasy easy guy shit, and if you're caught up with the light novels, you know it makes a pretty drastic story change that kind of pisses on a lot of the progress. It's not so terrible that it's outright story destroying, but it is a little disappointing that it's the direction it chose to go in. But beyond that, I will say that the whole power fantasy shit I did bring up earlier, some people don't like it, but I'm kind of torn because I do think the story earned the right to indulge itself a little bit. Mainly because in the beginning, everything Naofumi does is an intense struggle just to get a single victory. You really feel for the guy, and you want to see him win. The other heroes get the immediate love and praise from the kingdom, they get to fight monsters and have loyal party members, 
Now if he gets a child slave, he has to traumatize into becoming a warrior. Now it never reaches peak berserk misery porn, I will say that, but you will feel for Now for me, and it does try to indulge some emotional moments. Whether or not they work is kind of up to you. I think they were fine, though I will say I think it kind of blew its load a little too early in regards to the big one, the one that happens in episode 4 of the anime. I wanted that to sort of be the, the mid-season cliffhanger. The mid-season moment, the one that really kicked everything into high gear. I just thought it happened a little too early for what it was trying to do. But nevertheless, it really does go out of its way to show that Naofumi is beaten down by this kingdom. Even when he does get a victory and save people, they don't show any appreciation towards him. Because they still think he's just a scumbag. They think he's trying to exploit the situation and get praise. Of course, we know that deep down, he's a good guy. He's trying to do the right thing. He hates these people, but he's not gonna let them die but it's just a matter of perspective, and I think it's really well done. At least in regards to, you know, a basic bitch fantasy isekai story. Now, Raftalia, Naofumi's main party member who also acts as sort of the poster girl of the series. She's a pretty good character as well. Since she's sort of the second half, it would be important to explore their bond and keep her a very likable and endearing character. She's a demi-human, part human, part animal, specifically a raccoon. In this world, and especially this kingdom, demi-humans are horribly oppressed, treated as slaves that they can abuse or outright murder for fun. Not everyone in the kingdom believes this, there's plenty of people that sympathize with them, but the elites specifically view them as fodder. So now for me, a man seen as a rapist and might even be the sign of a coming apocalypse according to some crazy religious church that controls everything, travels with a girl viewed as dirty, subhuman trash. Neither of these main characters catch a break. In fact, Raftalia straight up has some PTSD issues she's dealing with. When she's first introduced, she sort of acts as the familiar protect the child figure for Nalfami, and really is the one that kicks off his whole redemption arc. But as they spend more time together, their relationship becomes a lot deeper, and Raftalia quite literally becomes the sole thing Nalfami has to keep going forward, at least at first. Now this series, as stated, never quite reaches peak berserk. It does not have that strength, even though it does attempt a lot of the same tropes, even down to the Berserker armor. But yeah, Berserk still runs circles around Shield Hero. You fuck with me! You fuck with me back! But I am willing to say that Shield Hero does what it does in a pretty effective manner. It's not incredible, but it does work. When the anime throws that do you give a shit test at you, I'm confident in saying you'll be hooked. Now there's a lot more to the series than I'm really discussing here, cause I'm trying to keep it a bit vague, don't want to spoil everything going in. Though everyone knows the premise, I mean, I'm willing to spoil that twist in the first episode cause it's the entire reason you're fucking watching in the first place. But other characters join Naofumi's party, they end up being pretty likable as well, if a little basic. I mean, the bird lolly was cute, but that's kind of all she was. And the other noble that joins up ends up really impacting the plot. Like a lot. The guys you're supposed to hate, you really end up fucking hating them. Like Christ, you want some of them to be ripped apart by monsters. Choke on a cock and die, spear asshole. Also the Thought Princess. Fuck you. Even the other heroes get put on blast for basically being reckless idiots. The series really makes a point of saying that everyone here isn't some grand paragon of virtue. These were kids dragged out of their cushy lives in their worlds and given powerful weapons. Then we're told to fight monsters. Of course it wasn't going to end with them all becoming grand legendary heroes. They get manipulated, they lie to people, they fuck each other over. There's really not a hero figure in this story beyond the guy accused of rape. Naofumi's arc is very interesting, at least to me personally. The guy doesn't want to save the world at first. He fully believes the other heroes are capable of doing that for him, and he's just trying to stay alive until he can go home. But circumstances grow increasingly complicated, to the point that he doesn't have a choice but to work with the very people who fucked him over. And eventually, everyone gets a wake-up call that shows that all the fun and games will end in basically the entire multiverse being dead. So these selfish, egotistical retards have to work together, or entities far beyond their understanding will kill everything. Which leads to a reveal that is downright cosmic in comparison to what we thought. Not gonna spoil it though, it's a good twist. And it raises an interesting question on what exactly being a hero in a setting like this would really be. As stated, I'm a sucker for stuff like this. The persecuted hero trope, the redemption story. Shield Hero is basically both. So even if this isn't a massive grand epic like another work, I'm gonna keep bringing it up. It tickles my fancy. I unironically like Shield Hero. It's not perfect, it has some issues that kinda irk me a lot, but what it does right is more than enough to keep watching. 
Also, goddamn, that queen is a fucking 10 out of 10 S rank tier MILF. Disregard the raccoon girl now for me. Become Mine's new father in law. Do it. Now, the issues I have with Shield Hero aren't too severe and mainly come down to personal preference. It affects both the anime and the light novel, but for different reasons. The anime, of course, has to change material to adapt for content and time. Some of the changes I'm actually okay with, others I kind of roll my eyes at. For one, there's a section of the story where the party has to go up against a psychopathic noble who tortures demi humans for fun. This guy was actually Raftelia's original owner and brutalized her and her friends for years after her village was massacred and they were taken. A lot of emphasis is put on her issues, her memories, and how much of an evil son of a bitch this dude actually is. Fucking slaves, get your ass back here! <laughs> They finally confront him, and this is where the anime and light novel deviates at least a little bit. In the light novel, Raftalia herself pushes the dude out a window, signifying how far she's come in her journey that she's able to stand up against the absolute monster that helped ruin her life. In the anime, it's played off a bit more like an accident. She still stabs him with her magic sword, he stumbles back, but he trips on his own weapon, and that's how he's sent out. I liked the more deliberate aspect to it in the light novel. You see that Raftalia has really grown into her role as a fighter and won't take shit anymore. She's not the little slave girl you saw before, she's now more than willing to fuck somebody up if they're asking for it. It's a small detail, so small that probably nobody beyond me cares. And I fully admit, it's not anything I'm legitimately angry about, just something I kind of preferred more from the light novel than the anime. The only real criticisms I have for the anime is some blatant CGI that looks not fucking great, but that's just part and parcel to the industry nowadays. Not much you can really do about that. Can't get blood out of a stone, especially when it's been like that for fucking years and we keep saying the same things over and over again. CGI sucks, give us 2D. The actual criticisms I have for Shield Hero more applies to the light novel and I guess season 2 when that comes out in April, but at this point it's just too early for that. When I say that after a certain point, the story sort of fades out of the identity it set for itself and becomes more reminiscent of basic Isekai, I'm not kidding. People finally respect Alpha me, he's actually on his way to making a kingdom. Plus, he gets a harem of girls that like him. Up until the entire cast vanishes and Alpha me does other things, but I can't talk about that right now. Granted, the motherfucker earned all of this, but you do sort of miss the beginning of the story, where the guy barely had any clue how anything worked and nobody wanted to help him. Alpha me had to learn things on his own because nobody was going to give him the time of day. It's why, ironically, he became a better fighter than a lot of other people because he couldn't rely on raw numbers to get things done. He had to figure it out himself. Of course, it couldn't just constantly come up with new ways to ruin Naofumi's life. He had to start winning at some point. I guess it's more about just execution than anything. If Naofumi got to be king by fucking the hot queen mommy, I'd be on board. Make more dojins of her, I'm fucking begging you, please. Still, Shield Hero is a good show, plus the light novel is pretty good too. It actually manages to use the hero's journey formula in its own unique way, and ends up being a pretty enjoyable series. I can't promise it's a life changer, but I definitely can't blame anyone for outright loving the series. It's one of the better easy guys, and you'd be amazed at how high that bar can actually go. It's not all gimmick trash, guys, I promise. Nevertheless, I'll go ahead and recommend Shield Hero. It's not the darkest fantasy series out there, in fact, it's not even really dark fantasy, at least in the traditional sense. Some bad shit happens to characters that really don't deserve it. There's blood, and eh, it covers some material that's pretty grim. But, I don't know. I wouldn't really call it anything that disturbing. It's not even as bad as Goblin Slayer. It's just a good story with a compelling protagonist and interesting spins on a formula. Don't go in expecting Berserk or Blade of the Immortal, anything like that. It's not really about that. It's not even really about the action or the violence. It's a very slow-paced show. It's more a story about stigma and how petty people can be to each other. It explores the bad side of humanity by just showing how downright nasty people can be. Like how selfish and manipulative they are when they're given a chance to be. And yeah, I definitely feel like I should talk about the quote-unquote controversy that happened when this anime started airing. Yeah, it actually ruffled a few feathers when this series came out, with journalists lambasting it for depicting a situation where a manipulative evil woman uses sexual assault allegations to further her own agenda, and now that can have disastrous consequences on the ones that have to suffer for no reason. Absolutely no clue why this would make them so upset, though. Yeah, no, just nothing's coming to mind. But that's Rising of a Shield Hero, a pretty good easy guy that at least tries to make you give a shit about what's happening, and that goes a long way compared to a lot of other stories that don't even bother having stakes or even a plot, and not even out of a sense of trying to be slice of life or just about enjoying funny situations. No, they have action, they have magic, it's just you don't care because the main, main guy's gonna win. He's basically a god. Yeah. Some people probably roll their eyes just seeing this upload pop up, because, yeah, not everyone's gonna like a show like this. But if it's to your taste, you're probably gonna enjoy it. Until next time, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys.
Hey, loser. Do you want a shirt? Do you want a t-shirt? I have shirts now. Look in, look in the description for a link to a t-shirt you can buy. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll kill your family. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll poison your dog. If you don't buy the t-shirt, you're going to be the only person in town that does not have a t-shirt. Everyone's going to look at you funny. There's going to be social consequences to not having one of these t-shirts. I'm now making express threats of violence against you if you do not buy my t-shirt. I will call the police, tell them how they're not, you know, you're not buying my shirt. They're going to plant crack in your house, and they're going to arrest you and then beat you up in a jail cell. Buy my shirt. So yeah, I, I wasn't kidding when I said my PC died. Like, it, it died fucking hard. I mean, it went from the hard drive was having issues, to maybe I should install an SSD, to, oh god, now it's on fire. Yeah, it was just it, it was just kind of one, one thing after another. But then the next two weeks, my new PC should be coming in, and it'll be right back to business as usual, where I'll work on Berserk Part 4. But at the moment, I mainly want to focus on just finishing the script and recording the audio for it before I dedicate to... The absolute beast that's gonna be. Still, I'm happy I got the chance to talk about Shield Hero. I actually really like this anime a lot. As stated, it's nothing really that spectacular or special. It has a few really stupid parts to it. Like, I do feel like the other heroes end up just being manipulated way too fucking easily, but you, you get the point. The idea is it's a story about stigma and jumping to conclusions and nobody trusting each other. You, you get the point. You know, I think it's a fun show. I think it is. I think it's actually really fun. So hopefully you guys will think it's fun too. Alright, see ya.